So without further ado, it is now my pleasure to celebrate some of the folks who truly deserve to be recognized. Today we are honoring three great people with NJBIA's annual Leonard C. Johnson Award. This award celebrates leaders who have distinguished themselves in their efforts to improve New Jersey's business climate and encourage job growth. And all three are very dedicated and worthy recipients. I'm honored personally because I have the privilege of working with all of them on a daily basis, so bear with me. It is my distinct honor to present our first award to Anthony Skip Semino. He has been the executive director of the Assembly Majority Office since January of 2018, but his impressive career in public service in the private sector runs decades. Skip has been a second lieutenant in the National Guard. He has served the Board of Education on the Board of Education in Hamilton and a freeholder in Mercer County. He has also been an assemblyman and was a commissioner for the Department of Personnel under Governor Florio. He has been the president of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital and has been a partner at the Kaufman Zeta Group. And on top of all that, yesterday was his birthday. <laughs> with, with all of Skip's experience, not to mention Skip was a small business owner and a member, former member of NJBIA, it makes it a pleasure for NJBIA to work with him on a daily basis because we know he gets it. And he can quickly understand the business community's concerns with any particular bill that we bring to his attention. And above all, no matter how challenging an issue might be, Skip always brings his affable manner and professionalism to the table every time. And for that, we are grateful. And Skip, personally, has it been an absolute pleasure working with you, sir. Um, I also want to acknowledge that I have heard from, from your team and staff about how, how much of a, a mentor and a leader you are, and I think you should know that because they have privately mentioned that to me. And so it is, so please welcome NJBIA's Leonard C. Johnson Award winner to Skip Semino. And I also want to acknowledge that Senate President Sweeney and Assembly Speaker Coughlin did put and compile a joint resolution in your honor and also want to acknowledge that your son, John Semino, is here with us today from t and Associates. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to see everybody this morning. Uh, thank you. I'm extremely humbled and honored by the award. Chrissy, to you and the members of the Business and Industry Association, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my son, John, being with us, as well as my daughter-in-law, Janine Semino, with William Penn Bank, as well as his partners from t and um, I, I just simply want to say, because we've been asked to keep these short, so I have only have an hour speech uh, to give everybody. But um, I, I simply want to say that from my perspective, uh, I've had the pleasure of working at the intersection of public uh, policy and private enterprise. The BIA, uh, in my humble perspective, has been uh, a, an extraordinary representative of the business community. As a small business person, I joined it back in 1981, and through the course of my life, I've been associated with it. And I think it's done an extraordinary job, uh, as well as their other business partners uh, through the pandemic, uh, quite frankly. Uh, it's not just about us in government. It's about all of us collectively together, and the BIA has represented the business community extraordinarily well. Thank you very much for the honor. Next up is Dr. Aaron Fickner, who began his role as president of the New Jersey Council of Community Colleges in 2018. Prior to joining NJCCC, Aaron served as commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Labor under Governor Christie, and has had leadership roles with DL going back to 2010. Under his leadership, the department implemented new initiatives that expanded economic opportunity through innovative, data-driven partnerships with high schools, colleges, community-based organizations, and employers. He is truly a champion of our community colleges, and he recognizes the key role these institutions play in ensuring our young adults of New Jersey have a chance at affordable and high-quality education. NJBIA has been absolutely thrilled to work closely in partnering with Aaron and NJCCC on two key initiatives, improving career pathways and making basic skills training more accessible for our workers throughout the state of New Jersey. 
With his leadership, we know these programs will be extremely successful, Aaron. Please join me in, in recognizing Aaron Fickner with the Leonard T. Johnson Award. Aaron. Thank you so much, Chrissy. This is uh, really an incredible honor, and I'm proud to accept this award on behalf of our 18 amazing community colleges and their 300,000 people whose lives they touch every year. The community colleges are uh, vital institutions of economic opportunity and economic growth in our state. Uh, with incredible local connections and local roots and a statewide reach that I think few institutions um, can together um, make. And so it is incredibly an honor to accept this award um, and to work every day with the community colleges. I want to acknowledge the two other award winners, Skip Semino and Judy Savage, for their incredible contributions to our state. It's an honor to work with both of them and to have worked with Judy for uh, many, many years in many different roles. Um, and good to see you, Judy. Thank you uh, for being here. Um, I want to thank NJBIA, uh, Michelle Sakurka, Chrissy, um, and Chris Emma Holtz, and all of the staff at NJBIA. I think we all agree that NJBIA has been an incredible voice um, in our state, um, particularly on issues uh, of workforce development and the need to continue to build a skilled workforce to make sure that New Jersey has the most skilled, productive, and innovative workforce in the country. And we are proud to work closely with NJBIA as we launch our Pathways to Career Opportunities Initiative later in December um, with generous support from the state legislature and from the governor's office. Um, this a new initiative um, will bring all of us together to make sure that we're building pathways to economic opportunity while building a skilled workforce to drive our state's economy. So look forward to working with all of you Thank you very much, uh, Chrissy, and to all of your colleagues at NJBIA. This is an incredible honor. Thank you. And as Aaron mentioned, uh, our next honoree is Judy Savage. Earlier this year, Judy retired as the executive director of the New Jersey Council of County Vocational and Technical Schools. In her more than 20 years in this role, Judy advanced a greater understanding of what career technical education can provide for all students not just students who wanted to get into the trades. And she was a true partner with NJBIA for most of that time. She helped our CTE programs that can be included in VOTEC schools like health sciences and engineering. And of course, she was the muscle behind advocating for the Securing Our Children's Future Bonds Act in 2018, which appropriated $220 million towards enhancing career and technical education programs, and to help bolster our next generation workforce. We're happy to see Judy is staying on part-time as a consultant with the association, and we're absolutely thrilled that she's here today to accept this award in person. So please uh, join me in recognizing Judy Savage. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, thank you so much to Chrissy and the NJBIA leadership for this tremendous honor. For nearly a decade, NJBIA has been an incredible partner to New Jersey's County Vocational Technical Schools, and I humbly accept this award on their behalf. The mission of our schools is simple. It's to prepare all types of students for success in a fast-changing and rapidly evolving workplace environment. NJBIA's intense focus on education and workforce and the association's recognition that schools cannot meet employer needs alone without the active involvement of business has enabled us to better address the critical needs of employers. Together, we've championed the expansion of career and technical education to grow that pipeline of young people with the academic, technical, and career readiness skills that are needed to keep New Jersey's economy moving forward and as businesses move down the road to recovery, this partnership is more essential than ever. Our county vocational schools stand ready and hope to continue working with the association and with employers, large and small, to ensure that today's students are well prepared to become tomorrow's workers, tomorrow's professionals, and our state's future leaders. Thank you so much for this honor. The next award is given annually to public servants who have, been outstand, have made an outstanding contribution to New Jersey and its business community. Let me first start by recognizing Senator Nellie Poe. 
Senator Poe was elected to the Senate in 2011 after she started serving in the Assembly in 1997. She is the first woman and first Hispanic to represent the 35, 35th District and also chairs the Latina Caucus. Senator Poe also serves as chairwoman of the Senate Commerce Committee since 2017, where she has championed groups like NJBIA to look beyond the direct impact issues are having on business and consider how they impact the broader community. That said, Senator Poe has also taken on issues that are critical to business, including addressing the cost of local education funding and higher education, as well as supporting legislation designed to increase New Jersey's highly skilled workforce. I have to mention it is absolute pleasure to work with Senator Poe. She always listens to the business community and takes our consideration into account when putting forth public policy. And I've had the pleasure of working with her in many different roles and always has an open door with us. And so Senator Poe, I do appreciate everything that you've done for the business community and will continue to do and you're a true leader in the New Jersey Senate. So thank you, Senator Poe. Please everyone congratulate, join me in congratulating Senator Poe. This is heavy. <laughs> wow, this is beautiful. Truly, what an honor. Uh, first of all, thank you so very much, Chrissy, for that lovely introduction. Good morning to everyone. I am so very thrilled and happy to be here today. And what an honor it is for me to be able to uh, not only receive this, but also be, be here in person to be able to share these few moments with you and, and just express how truly honored I am to receive the poll. Paul L. Troth Award uh, and to share it with uh, Assemblywoman Munoz and all of the other honorees. Congratulations to each and every one of you as well. Um, I'd like to thank the New Jersey uh, uh, Business and Industry Association. And I know that she could not be here today as Chrissy indicated, but I also want to acknowledge and make mention um, the president and CEO, Michelle Sekirka, um, for all of her tireless uh, work in promoting and supporting our homegrown businesses and giving them every chance to survive and thrive under these trying circumstances uh, that was brought upon all of us by this horrible pandemic that we all suffered through. As Chrissy mentioned, as uh, I'm the chair of the Senate Commerce Committee, and I know that many businesses in our state has been hit hard by the pressures brought on by the pandemic. From the legislative end, let me just say very quickly that we have tried really hard to gain access to relief funds um, and to distribute them so that these businesses that faced the financial distress during the worst days of our coronavirus uh, pandemic can continue to grow and prosper. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that we have so much more work to do on that end. I recognize the fact that there is a great deal that can be done, that should be done, and that we're looking forward in this next session to getting that done in order to ensure that those funds are not only there, but are distributed and used in a manner in which it's so very needed to making sure that we do it the right way. Um, <clears throat> I have worked hard um, and, and hand in hand with my colleagues and business groups to make sure that our business receive their fair share <clears throat> of relief funds and supportive resources that they need in order to remain and stay open. Of course, of course, we know we know that many of the of uh, these businesses continue to face staffing challenges as well as other challenges, and we must keep the uh, the rea that reality uh, in mind as we go forward as policymakers, just as we also continue to monitor uh, the possible health effects of the pandemic that's in front of us. And hopefully, rather, rather than saying in front of us, we hope to, to be able to say that's behind us at this point in time. If we if the last two years have taught us anything, it is just how critical New Jersey businesses are to every, every day's working of our state. 
and how vital it is for those businesses to succeed under daunting conditions. New Jersey businesses and New Jersey owners represent the best of us. These are hardworking and resilient individuals and companies that I know and I'm confident that they will continue to bounce back and really uh, fight and, and, and bounce back from this pandemic and be more ro robust than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for this great honor. I am so privileged and honored to be your recipient and be the award of this. Thank you again. And we are also thrilled to present Assemblywoman Nancy Munoz with the Paul L. Trost Award. Assemblywoman, Assemblywoman Munoz was first elected to her seventh term representing the 21st District. Since being sworn in 2009, to complete the term of her late husband, Eric Munoz, Nancy has been a stalwart supporting pro-business policies and fighting for those policies that hinder small businesses in New Jersey. Nancy has also been a consistent voice in, a, in opposition to components of the New Jersey state budget where it continues to grow, as seen over the last four years, and a strong proponent of tax reduction wherever the state can find it. On top of all that, Assemblywoman Munoz stepped up as a volunteer nurse during the pandemic, whether it has been on the front line, healthcare worker, or administering vaccines. Even when there was a PPE shortage, Assemblywoman Munoz was showing people on video how to make masks, masks on her own sewing machine. In that video, she said six key words, we are all in this together. And we're glad she works together with New Jersey's business community. So please welcome Assemblywoman Nancy Munoz. It is heavy. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Chrissy. Thank you, NJBIA. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm, it's always nice to hear about my skills outside of being a legislator. Um, I, I didn't bring one of my homemade masks today, but um, I traveled yesterday, so I have a mask just in case. Um, but I would like to thank you all. I also, you know, I'm really grateful that I was part of a team this year that we had a very high success rate in my caucus this year. We gained six new members. And I believe that part of that message was that we were, we were messaging about the business community. You know, I, I presented, um, we were, and we were outspent handily, and yet we still got our message across that we are there as the members of the minority party for the business community. The other thing, you know, I presented last summer to a, a girls' school in my hometown, and one of the girls asked me a really, what I thought was a really good question. You know, a lot of them were like questions that I think their parents had suggested that they asked, but this year, because they were way above their, their age level. Um, but this girl said, what do you think about when you look at legislation? And I thought that that was a real, and I said to her, that's probably one of the best questions I've ever been asked. And I said, when I look at a piece of legislation, I number one, look at how it affects my taxpayers and the, my constituents in my district. Whether or not, you know, there's unintended consequences to legislation that people don't even consider. And how will that affect that average person, and I say average with all due respect, who lives within our community? How will that increase their taxes? How will that change their life? And then I also look at that in the same way when I look at it, how it affects businesses. Because as all, every recipient so far has said, it's so important that we have, that we, our small business community grows and thrives in the state of New Jersey. You know, my father-in-law owned the Colts Neck General Store. He was an orphan from Puerto Rico who came on a boat. And he built, he, they, they worked 365 days a year. And he was able to send both of his sons to medical school. Actually, his, one of his grandson is Dan Munoz over there. Um, and so we see what small businesses can do by hard work and smart policies. And my job as a legislator and a member of the budget committee and the health committee and the housing committee is to look at all of these, how policies that we're looking at affect you. And as Chrissy said, 
to be able to push back against policies that we know are going to hurt you. So that's my job. So I, again, I'm grateful for this award. I'm grateful that I, for this acknowledgement. I'm grateful for having won again so that I can be there, have that voice at the table for the businesses as well as my constituents. So again, thank you to NJBI. I am extremely grateful. Thank you. And I was going to just make a comment. You should see see what I do when I have to view legislation, Assemblywoman. <laughs> La lastly, today, we are honoring the memory of the late Candy Strait with the creation of the Candy Strait Woman Trailblazer Award. Candy was a trailblazing advocate for women in New Jersey politics and in the business world and the film industry. She knew the challenges women face in reaching greater professional heights. But not only did she meet them and exceed them herself, she hel also helped other women do the same. Candy Strait served as vice chair of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. She was a member of the Rutgers Board of Governors, and she played an instrumental role in the elections of Governor Christine Todd Whitman in 1993 and in 1997. And at NJBIA, we were honored to have Candy as part of our Competitiveness Council, where her input was always of great value. I know if Michelle were here today, she would say Candy was an incredible role model to her. And it was always a privilege to get to know her better and to be guided by her sage advice. To continue her trailblazing spirit, NJBIA will continue the Candy Straight Woman Trailblazer Award every year. Accepting this award on Candy's behalf today is Gail Gordon. Gail, welcome. Uh, when I did Candy's eulogy, uh, one of the things that people said was, I felt her in the room. And it was a remarkable experience. And I said later, yeah, it was Candy going, don't screw this up. <laughs> so I promise you, I won't screw this up. I have to say impromptu, I saw Regina, Agia, Bill Palatucci, Katie Gibbs walk in. I hope you know how much Candy meant to all of you and how much she cared about you. Um, this is a remarkable, remarkable award, and Candy would be so proud. She would just be so proud. Actually, Chrissy reminded me that six years ago, we debuted Candy's film Equity here. Candy was all about equity and equality, whether it be race, opportunities, or gender. Every woman here stands taller because of Candy's accomplishments. Thank you.